Nerd Wallet just put out uh, this real estate investing quick start guide for beginners, right? Essentially, what it is is Nerd Wallet was like, yo, man, here's five ways that you guys can get started in investing in real estate. And I got to say, I do not agree that this is good advice, okay? I have some serious disagreements with what Nerd Wallet is telling y'all to do. Let's talk about it. <laughs> All right, y'all, so I want to break down what I like and what I don't like about what Nerd Wallet is telling you, right? They just dropped this, uh, Real Estate Investing Quick Start Guide for Beginners. I'm going to go ahead and link the article to the, uh, or link, yeah, link the article to the notes, to the notes below. That's what I was trying to say. Johnny, I couldn't, I couldn't get the words out, okay? Now, Johnny, let's be real. You're a fucking nerd. Have you heard of Nerd Wallets? No, my fucking nerd of the century over here, Johnny, hasn't even hasn't even heard of it. Just so everybody's aware, Johnny's my brother-in-law. So luckily my wife hears me talk enough at home and she doesn't watch my fucking show because she would probably yell at me for calling him a nerd on camera. But she's not going to watch because she has to talk to me. Anyway, back. Johnny, stop distracting me. Back to the show. All right. So they essentially, guys, they give you five things they think you should do, right? Invest in REITs, invest in online platforms uh, where, where you own parts of real estate, like crowdfunding, okay? Uh, invest in rental properties, flip houses, and rent out a room, okay? So those are the five things they think y'all should do. And I do not agree. I do not think that those all five of them are good ideas. I think some of them are actually very, very bad ideas, okay? And uh, I'm going to just... Break them all down for y'all, okay? I'm going to break them down. John, I'm sorry I called you a nerd, man. You're not a nerd. I love you. Do you want to come over here and hug me on camera? No, we're good. Please? We're good. All right. So REITs. I mean, REITs. REITs, guys. Okay, REITs. Essentially, REITs are like a stock. That's really what it is. You're basically buying a stock, right? Uh, REITs are pretty much treated like basically like you buy stock in Apple or you buy stock in Tesla, this or that, right? And... Uh, I I don't invest in stocks, okay? I know a lot of people think that I invest in stocks, or people always ask me, oh, what do you think of the stock market? I don't fuck with the stock market, dude. I don't mess with it. And the main reason why, and the main reason I don't like REITs, is, is the same thing. Uh, there's no control. You have no control over the investment whatsoever. Other people are in charge of your investment. Everything that goes along with your investment, you have literally no control, right? So me, I started Holton Wise. I started this business. I control this business, right? So if this business prospers or this business fails, it's because I did my job well or I did my job poorly, okay? I control my own destiny, right? So because of that, I don't mess with stocks. I don't mess with REITs, right? Like Elon Musk goes on Joe Rogan, smokes some weed, and a ton of investors lost money, right? They have no idea, no control. They have no clue that Elon is going to go do that, right? Think about the people that invested in Enron, right? Like, there's other people out there playing with your money, and you have no involvement in it whatsoever. So I'm not saying, like, the stock market and REITs are horrible. I'm just telling you, from my perspective, as somebody who's made a lot of money in real estate, I don't play with investments that I can't have some level of control. Like I've made the majority of my money uh, in rental properties and creating this Holton Wise business that I have. And the, the best part about it is I could physically touch things, right? You could physically go to a rental property or I could physically, you know, put my hands in my business. So that's why I don't mess uh, with REITs or stocks, right? So uh, not... Not saying that's horrible for newbies, but if you're a newbie out there, you got to really understand that, hey, man, if I get involved in real estate, this is a way I could do it, and I'll have no control. So that's honestly knocking two of the five out, REITs and the outline platform, the crowdfunding stuff, right? So then that leaves the other three. And you have involvement in all three, right? Rental property investing, flipping houses, renting out a room, okay? I have made a lot of money flipping houses, and I've made a lot of money with rental properties, uh, we'll talk about those, but as far as <laughs> renting out a room, oh, dude, don't do that. Don't do that. Now, technically, I will be real with you. I got my my start in real estate by renting out a room, okay? Uh, when I was 21 years old, I worked at a radio shack, 
and I bought my first home and I house hacked it. I rented out a room. However, the person I rented out that room to was my brother. Not nerd ass Johnny back there though. He's my brother in law. That is different. My brother. He's cool. I'm just kidding. I don't know why I'm assaulting you. I love you. I love you. Say it back. Love too. All right, thank you. Uh, but anyway, so I rented that to my brother. And that was fine. That worked out. We were both incredibly young guns. Uh, now, you know, I'm married. I have three kids. I ain't messing with that kind of life. I'm gray. I'm bald. I'm fat. Wasn't gray, bald, or fat back then, okay? Wasn't married. Didn't have three kids, right? So maybe if you're a newbie and you're like, you know, my age, 21, college age, right? Maybe that could work for you. You know, you could buy a house, go to college, rent it to your college roommates. Maybe that type of thing could work for those type of newbies. But I really think that's a very age-specific way to get involved in real estate investing. Like if you're me, a middle-aged man with a wife and kids, you can't be renting out a house, uh, renting out a room in your house, bro. Especially to like strangers, especially if you have kids involved. Like, dude, that is batshit insane. So, uh, you know, if you're like over 30 or you're any age and married, probably not a good move, right? Probably a very poor move. But I guess for a very small amount of people, uh, that could work. That could potentially work. But that, that's a very niched out amount of people that I think that would be like an appropriate way to get started in real estate. If anything, if you're going to try to get started in like the house hacking, I would do a multifamily. Like buy a duplex or a triplex or a quad. Nothing bigger than that, though, because once you get to five units and up, you have to buy apartment buildings and get commercial financing. If you buy a duplex, a triplex, or a quad, uh, you can get a residential 30-year loan, pay like 3% down, 35 actually, and then live in one of the units. Then the people you are renting, you're still doing the house hack, but they're not like physically in your actual private space, right? So if you're living in a four-unit apartment building, uh, there's no difference to you being the, like, as far as the living situation for your family. You know, you could own it and have everybody's rents go towards your mortgage. I mean, that's no weirder for your family than just, like, renting an apartment in any other complex, right? So for that, I, I would say it's okay. But I wouldn't do no room in a single-family house if you have a family or if you're older, right? That's my thoughts on that. Now, leaves us to the last two. I like both of these, sort of. Uh, think about investing in rental properties and flipping houses, okay? Flipping houses, that is not like, that's not really investing, to be real. That is a job. That is a career. That is a skill. That's like telling you, hey, man, you know you could make money uh, selling cars? Yeah, no shit. If you're a car salesman, a car dealer, that's like a business, Right. You need to have the skills involved to do that business. Like, you know, it's another secret side hustling and uh, side hustle investment uh, opportunity. Painting houses. Yeah. You got to learn how to paint the houses or start a house painting business. Right. That's all that is. That is an active business. Right. You are literally actively doing that business. That's not investing that's you starting a new career dude you could also broker houses become an agent or a broker if you have the skills necessary necessary to successfully run that business sure you can make a lot of money but by no means do i want you guys to think that flipping houses is easy and passive now truth be told my team does work with investors and we do help you flip houses uh and you could utilize us to, to get a lot of that done for you. But dude, you are drastically going to cut into your margins when doing that, okay? So you're doing some investing and you're making it as passive as possible, but you're going to pay the tax, okay? You're definitely going to pay the tax. And then that leads me to the other one, rental properties. In my opinion, if you're a newbie, you're a beginner, of the five uh, that they are telling us, of the five things NerdWallet is telling you is a good way to get started. Honestly, I feel like this is really the only like true good way because you can do a lot of things uh, wrong in the rental property space and still get bailed out just by the nature of the business, right? Like I have horror stories and people watch the Tennis from Hell show here on Holton Wise TV all the time and there's a lot of bad stuff that could happen. But if you do like a few things, any newbie could jump into the rental property game 
minimal skill, minimal experience, minimal work, and still make money. All you have to do is a few things. Literally, this is all you got to do. And this will work in any market. Now, I do believe y'all should be investing in red markets, right? Blue markets, historically horrible for landlords. And it's getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, okay? I'm talking about landlords getting fined $10 million in, like, I think it was Washington, D.C. for not taking Section 8 tenants. Uh, New York right now, it takes, like, two years to evict people, right? So you just do a few small things in red markets, you'll do just fine. That'd be a great way for uh, newbies. Number one, don't buy in the super cheapest areas. Just buy, like, normal, median price stuff, okay, in the MSA, right? Figure out what the median income is, and then stick right there. Don't be buying houses in the rich neighborhoods, but if you're going to get started in investing, especially in markets you never heard of, don't buy in the poorest neighborhoods either because that's where a lot of the risk is, and then you're in the rich neighborhoods. They're not really renting over there, okay? Just stick to the median income, simple houses. Don't get crazy for your first investment. Don't start with burr deals or huge renovations or foreclosures. Just buy simple houses off of the MLS that need very moderate cosmetic work, and then you could put in a median income tenant, okay? And buy these houses with a loan and get a home inspection. You do that, you're golden. You can't really lose money. Why? Because you picked a nice low-risk median income house, not super expensive but not incredibly high risk, you got a third-party inspection, so they're telling you exactly the condition of the property. And then lastly, you're using a loan. This is good for two reasons. One, you don't have to use all your money. Say the house, and like a lot of the markets I'm in, like you can get a house for like 100 k that will rent for like $1,300, $1,400, okay? Median income house, no super crazy neighborhoods, 100 k 1300 in rent, right? Pretty simple stuff, but if you buy it cash, you have to pay 100k for the 100k house, and also you might not be aware that that 100k house is really in a sketchy neighborhood that you don't know about, and it's actually only worth 50k. That would be bad, right? If you get a lender involved, first of all, you don't have to spend 100k to buy the 100k house. You only have to spend 25k. The lender will kick in the other 75k. That's cool. Now you can buy four houses. In addition to that, though, perhaps more important for those newbies out there. The lender is going to do an appraisal, whether you want them to or not. They don't care that you think it's worth 100. You're only putting up 25 grand into the deal. They're putting in 75 grand into the deal, and you're a newbie. You don't know you don't know dick about real estate, okay? They're a bank. They're smart. They got a whole bunch of money, right? So you think they're going to let you make a mistake. They think they're going to let you pay $100,000 for a $50,000 house when three-fourths of the pie is their money? It don't work that way. So if you're in a median income area, you get a loan, you're not spending a lot of money, your tenants are going to be low risk, and you're almost guaranteed to not overpay for the property because the bank is protecting their own ass before they even worry about you. So your ass is just like protected as a side effect from them protecting their own ass. You do that, you really can't screw it up. Then you own the house for at least 7 to 10 years. It's almost impossible to lose money in that scenario, guys. And if you hold it for a long haul, it's really, 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 really hard not to make a lot of money over the long haul. Think from like your 30s to retirement, okay? You're literally using someone else's money, the bank, and then having the tenant pay off the loan for you. And you're almost assured you didn't overpay for the investment. And you can get a property manager and there's little to no work and boom. So if you're a newbie of the five that NerdWallet's telling you to do, I would really just stick with that one for all the reasons mentioned in the video. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.